Hi guys, I'm Gary Asterias, and today I'm going to be showing you guys some super overpowered 5212 custom tactics that might just be the best tactics that I've put together yet. The 5212 in this whole 5 back meta isn't a go to. You mainly see a 3421, which operates as a 5 back. The 541 is generally noted as the strongest. But with the 5212 and with all the triangles that you naturally get with the way this formation's formatted, just allows for an extremely fast passing game. But you can you can play at any tempo that really suits you you haven't got to play quick but the point is you've always just got passing options passing options upon passing options it's obviously robust particularly with the way i have formatted this once we get to the tactics but ultimately this is an extremely free-flowing formation and honestly i can see this one catching wind and kind of becoming the forefront of this five back meta Getting into the custom tactics, starting with the defensive style, we'll just leave this unbalanced. The defensive width is 30, this just ensures it's really compact at the back and there's no spaces through the middle to let through through balls and things of that nature. The depth in this 5-back is 60, we don't want to be sitting back, we want the ability to be able to manually press. We don't want the automatic offside traps, we don't need to go that full on with it. 60 is a perfect spot to be able to manually play that high line and win the ball high up the pitch and then capitalise on those spaces that have been exposed. For the offensive tactics, we've got the build-up play that is unbalanced. Chance creation, as always, is on direct passing. The attacking width is on 50. I did try this lower, but the cam and strikers were so close. It was weird how close they were. I started with them on 40, and honestly, it felt like the two strikers were touching shoulders. So I upped this straight away by 10, so it was bang in the middle at 50. This seems to be perfect players in the box this is on six this is just to ensure we do get numbers forward when we are on the attack we will have several players with the stay back instruction and this just ensures it's balanced and those players are still somewhat involved in the attack corners and free kicks i always just leave this on one i really do not find it necessary to put this higher to make chances off of corners and free kicks i always find there is enough numbers up to play a pass and create a chance off of it Next, we'll talk about the player instruction. So we'll start with the strikers and work our way down. So both strikers are going to be on stay central and they're also both going to be on comeback on defense. Stay central is very important for ensuring that your strikers are always present in the box and they're not drifting out into positions that really isn't useful. We're going to be really committing the wing backs with the way this is formatted. So they will be occupying those wide areas, supplying the players in the middle. And obviously you want your strikers there. So really important for this set up keep those on stay central i don't feel the need for the getting behind instruction this isn't really about the really direct over the top through ball kind of way of playing this is all about you know passing build up skill moves utilizing the overlaps and then working the ball into the box when you've got a getting behind instruction and you're playing in that way normally you always find that the strikes are pushing right on the defensive line and when you're trying to work the ball into the box that can actually be a hindrance because they're not sitting in the pockets of space they're constantly like just just before that like offside position it's just not useful so keep that off the defensive support on comeback on defense this isn't so much about being really defensive it just makes it easier once you have turned over the possession to link up the play because everyone's kind of there as a unit so don't think of this as being super defensive it is just about getting that into play on the counter attack together just a little bit easier for your centre attacking midfielder, the comeback on defence instruction is exactly as I've just explained on the strikers. It's not about being defensive. It's just so the formation really keeps its shape and you haven't got this like divide between your centre mid and defence and the front three. So they're all like moving as a unit. You know, it just keeps it really, really easy to get the passing going faster on the counter. We will also be putting the get into the box for cross instruction on our centre attacking mid. I'm a really big advocate for this instruction on cams. It just really helps them make more offensive runs, get into better positions when you are working that ball in the final third. They will get a lot more goals because of this instruction, but they'll also be linking up the play and feeding in the strikers a lot more as well. Both of our centre mids are going to be on stay back while attacking and cover centre. Now, because we put that players in the box instruction all the way up to six, 
The main reason for doing that is to ensure these two don't go missing in the attack. They are there on the edge of the box. They're there as a passing option, but also even commit further than that and actually getting involved in the attack and scoring goals as well. Both of our wing backs are going to be on join the attack. We're not going to use the overlap instruction because a little bit like the getting behind instruction, it just makes their attacking movement just kind of a bit robotic. They're just bombing it in straight lines. With join the attack and having it on mixed attack, you generally find they will commit really early and get involved in that interplay, but they'll do it in a way where they commit into the space opposed to just sticking to the byline. It just makes your attacks a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more unpredictable, and you're just going to get more goals because of it as well. For your three centre-backs, they're all just going to be on default, as always, which is stay back while attacking. Your goalkeeper, I also keep this on balanced. If you like the comes across crosses, sweeper-keeper instruction, then by all means go for it, but I personally just leave this on balanced. Next, we'll talk a little bit about the best types of players to use to get the most out of the formation. So starting with the strikers, I personally am currently using Cruyff and Mane. I would really aim to go for strikers that are as high calibre as possible, just so you get the best possible shooting animations and movement because we're not really assigning too much in terms of what we want them doing in the attacks we're kind of relying on the card really not only that but the higher caliber the card particularly if they've got the shooting traits as well you'll just get more favorable animations that allow you to score more goals from the chances that you're creating Croy for me even though stats wise he's not the highest i get so many favorable animations that help me score more goals and mané what he lacks in animations he makes up for on the stats themselves so just go for the best that you can get hold of here only other thing i would add is a right foot on the right left foot on the left but if like me you do have a right foot on the left just aim for the five star weak foot for your center attacking midfielder you just want somebody with kind of more of a leaner body type really really good agility balance and dribbling i'm currently using this rodrigo card and he's basically maxed out in that department he's extremely snappy on the ball his skill move animations come off extremely fast and he's obviously got a decent final product as well, particularly with that chemistry style boost. You want someone kind of of that Neymar style in this position, just someone that is obscenely responsive on the left stick that you're able to manoeuvre with as good as you possibly can. For your two central midfielders, I'd recommend a big man like Marino and a small guy like Modric. So Modric is your more typical box-to-box. -box. Marino is your big man. Five-star weak foot is always a bonus on both because they're making passes in a lot of key areas where you do not want to be giving up the ball or making a loose pass. So that just ensures that you're never really giving up the ball in a bad place. If you do like your Travellers, then I do recommend left on the left, right on the right with the outside of the foot shot trait. No more than 89 shot power because the positions they take up in this formation are really good for them. Like I showed a Modric goal earlier when I was talking about the depth. Like that kind of goal is not uncommon with how this formation is set up. For your two wing backs, you want players that are as rounded as possible because they're going to be involved in all aspects of the game. So I use Musiala as my right wing back and then I use Alfonso Davies as my left wing back. I really would stress that if you do like using skill moves on the ball to aim for five star skills on these, I know we think of them as wing backs, but essentially they're your only wide men in this formation. So anything in the wide areas is left to these guys to work the ball and make something happen for you. So it's really vital that you have as many tools at your disposal as possible. And five-star skill moves, in my opinion, are a big, big part of that. For your three centre-backs, you want them to be fast, strong, lengthy. And like the front men, you want them to be as high calibre as possible. Because when somebody's countering with the likes of a Mbappe or an R9, you know, you need to be able to hang with those players. And you're only going to be able to do that with high calibre, fast, lengthy centre-backs. I'm currently using Marquinhos, Sergio Ramos and Munier as my third centre-back. Generally, if you want to be as flexible as possible and have the ability to switch into other formations, a lot of you most likely will move either a centre-mid or a wing-back into the centre-back position as your third centre-back. If you're going to do it with a wing-back, just make sure they are of a bigger frame like this Munier card because you don't want someone like short, like a Zinchenko or something in at centre-back because you're just going to have scenarios where that just doesn't work for you. So just ensure that the wing-back isn't necessarily you know, centre-back level stats, but they just need to have that frame of a centre-back. As for your goalkeeper, I'm using Cabell, but just go with whoever works. I hope you enjoyed the video today, guys. And as always, more than anything, I just hope you have fun with the tactics. Let me know if you do try them down below, how you got on with them. I will link my custom tactics playlist in the description below for you guys if there's any other formations that you want to check out. If there's any formations you do want custom tactics for, let me know what they are down below and I'll see what I can put together for you. If you did make it this far in the video though, guys, as always, I really appreciate your time. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn your bell on. Take care, guys.